Hello, good afternoon. My name is Tyler Maycath, Outreach and Stewardship Coordinator for Dennis Conservation Land Trust. Out here today at Sisuit Harbor on the north side of Dennis by Cape Cod Bay. Absolutely gorgeous day to be here and talk to you today about ospreys. Yes, one of the most commonly seen birds on Cape Cod in the summer and they nest around us and we watch them fishing all summer long here in Dennis. So let's see some photos of some ospreys nesting around Dennis. Before I talk to you more today about ospreys, I want to take you on a brief conservation tour of some conservation land around the harbor that Dennis Conservation Land Trust helped to conserve over the years. I hope you enjoy the tour. All right, our first stop on our little conservation tour here is right by the beach drop-off area for Cold Storage Beach. Uh, so those roses, the plant I just showed you, they're known as Rosa rugosa. That's its Latin name, also called beech rose. It's a non-native species. It was brought here. People planted it because they liked how it looked. And it also helps to stabilize dunes. So it's a plant that grows very, very well in very sandy soil and it helps to hold the soil together with its extensive root systems and its prolific growth all throughout the coastal dunes. It is a species that grows very fast and rapidly and also produces lots of seeds in its fruits uh, which are hips. They're uh, red fleshy fruits and we call them hips. They're full of seeds. The seeds are dispersed throughout the landscape by wind and birds and they form new rose plants. Now, because this species uh, is not from here and grows very fast, we call it an invasive species, or some would call it that. Uh, it's a topic of some discussion among scientists, this particular species. I do myself enjoy it. It's very beautiful, and I like to look at the blooms in the summer. Uh, I would encourage you to probably not plant it in your own yard because it can be rather aggressive. Uh, but do enjoy it where it is in its natural environment. Okay, here we are across the street here. We're on a property owned by the Land Trust. It's called Flake Meadow. Just across the street from Sisuit Harbor. In the background you can see a little tidal creek here that feeds into an area of salt marsh. So uh, this creek receives tidal flow from Cape Cod Bay and Sisuit Harbor uh, throughout the day. The tide rises and falls. It floods the surrounding marshlands and in those areas grows a lot of marsh grass which helps to create very peaty soils in these salt marsh areas. Uh, so a very unique ecosystem to the coast here and we're very fortunate to have salt marshes here in Dennis. It's the home of many critters, uh, hermit crabs, small nursery fish, and other organisms that call the salt marsh home. Over here, we see some lovely beach plum in full bloom. This is a coastal species. Uh, it's related to the cherry. Flowers look like cherry flowers to some extent. They're very quite beautiful. Um, they have this pinkish glow to them right now. Um, they grow in very sandy soils and they do produce small fruits, uh, beach plums, which you can make jelly out of and uh, a lot of people do during the summer. Here it is again. And over here uh, we have some trees. 
I'd like to show you. They're evergreen trees, right? Uh, trees with scaly needles. And uh, they do not fall off in the wintertime. Um, it has this interesting bark, reddish brown scaly bark. And because of the color of its bark, it's called Eastern Red Cedar. It's uh, a common tree in coastal areas around the Cape. It grows quite well here in the open sun. Um, it does well with salt spray. It seems to tolerate that quite well. Here's a little guy right here. Maybe only 10 or 15 years old. Um, these trees, they are prolific producers of seed. And uh, the seed happens to not be in a cone like a pine tree, uh, but it appears to be a kind of berry. And uh, the birds love to feed on it, especially in the winter. It's an excellent food source for birds in the winter. Here again, one last view of Flake Meadow. Okay, we're over here by the Flake Meadow sign, and I wanted to show you a plant that's growing over here so you know what it looks like. Very important to recognize. This is poison ivy. And notice it's got glossy green shiny leaves and what we call rosettes. There are three leaves together. That is a rosette. And uh, it contains a chemical, it's called urichiol. Gives you a really bad skin reaction for some people, it causes a bad rash. And uh, it can even lead to some uh, even worse symptoms for some people. So take care when outside. Avoid poison ivy. If you're exposed to it, make sure you wash with soap and water immediately afterwards. Wash your clothes that come into contact with poison ivy. And there is also another product that you can get. It's called Technu. And that will remove any oil from your skin. Uh, so if you're out in the woods around poison ivy a lot, it might be something that you think about getting at the drugstore. Okay, so here we are over by the osprey nest. It's up on a pole here. Zooming in on it here. You saw some shots of it earlier. Uh, so I've got my spotting scope out here that I was using to observe these birds. And uh, it's a great way to look from a distance safely so you're not disturbing the ospreys while they're in the mid of the middle of their nesting period. So uh, here they are behind me here, uh, up to the left here. And uh, they're nesting on a structure that was built here last year. Uh, they had a very cataclysmic encounter last year whereby the uh, platform that they were nesting on uh, rotted and gave way uh, during the tornado or sometime around that time last July or so. Uh, so they had an event uh, where their nest collapsed. Uh, the chicks were spared, so that's good news, right? Um, they made it through unscathed and their nest was repaired and now they're happily nesting up there again this year and that nest should hatch in the next two weeks. So um, Ospreys have typically three to four young, and uh, typically up to three of those can survive to leave the nest, and that's known as fledging, when they uh, are able to grow big and strong and leave the nest on their own. <coughs> so that takes, uh, for a young osprey, that takes five or six weeks uh, to grow big and strong and to be able to fly on their own and feed on their own. And uh, so <coughs> uh, these are migratory birds. Uh, as you might know, they arrive in April, in March, all around Cape Cod when it's still very cold out and the winds are biting. Um, but our friends come back every year and they come from as far away as South America. So uh, some of them have a 3,000 mile migration. It's really pretty dramatic. We think of them as birds of Cape Cod, but the truth is they spend most of their lives in South America. 
Uh, the osprey is pretty unique. It's the only fish eating, holy fish eating raptor. Uh, so it's a bird of prey. Its diet is 99% fish. So it pretty much just eats fish and fish only. It fully submerges into the water when it dives for fish. Pretty awesome. It can actually uh, use its wings to dive underwater and catch fish. And it has superb eyesight. And they see in color as well, like, um, like all birds do, or most birds. So excellent eyesight for finding fish, uh, which they also feed to their young. And so when they arrive here, um, they're nesting by usually late April, um, all around the Cape. You might remember last year, uh, some of you, there was a nest at the Wixon School in South Dennis, and it was on top of a utility pole. And uh, because of the nest, it was also it was actually shorting power to the school, and uh, it was really quite a problem for the folks at the Wixon School. Now the town was kind enough, the uh, Department of Public Works was kind enough to erect a nesting platform, which the ospreys, which happily they're using now. Check out these photos. So again, these birds are rather unique in that they are somewhat reliant on people for uh, carrying out their life history. They do nest in trees in uh, more re remote areas or where the habitat is really good quality. For the most part, they nest on these nesting structures or on utility poles or docks or jetties all around Cape Cod. Uh, so they're very unique that way. Uh, humans did a remarkable thing for the osprey. They actually helped stave off um, its extinction in North America. So uh, this species was very affected by a pesticide uh, called DDT a long time ago in the 50s and 60s. Um, it was causing a lot of harm to the species, causing nests to fail. And um, like a lot of other large raptors, um, it was just being decimated by this poison that people were using to control insect populations. Uh, finally, the poison, DDT, was banned and the ospreys began their population rebound. And they began to spread and actually colonize areas that they never had before. Uh, now here on Cape Cod, the population is about as high as it's ever been. So the species is thriving with the help of humans putting up these nesting structures for them. And uh, as for Dennis Conservation Land Trust, we played a big part, uh, or we've done our part in Dennis anyways, and we have helped put up four different osprey poles. And some of those are being uh, nested upon on our property um, over by Chapin Beach. Uh, we're very hopeful about the pole that we put up Last year, near the Hart Farm, uh, you can see it from the bridge on Upper County Road, and uh, we take we hope the ospreys take to it. It's certainly excellent fishing grounds for them. So, um, if you guys have any questions about ospreys or Dennis Conservation Land Trust, uh, please send me an email. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, my email is Tyler T Y L E R M at Dennis Conservation Land Trust Thank you, everyone. Be safe. Have a great summer.